Hi, and welcome to this Fornaf coffee break. My name is René Brummel. I'm a product specialist at Fornaf, and I will be your presenter today. As this coffee break is live, you can ask your questions via the GoToWebinar question window. We will answer them at the end of the coffee break. Today, we're going to add matrix tables to your Business Central reports. In some cases, there can be a lot of information on your Business Central documents. For instance, you may have an item with a lot of different variants. This happens when you sell clothing, for instance. You have a t-shirt in five sizes and three colors. If you print all those as separate lines on your sales documents, things get a little unclear. With 4NAV, you can clean up these documents by adding matrix tables. A matrix table is a table with dynamic column and line titles, depending on the records you are processing. To demonstrate adding matrix tables, I'm going to use these steps. Prerequisites, what do I need to get going? In step two, I will group my lines per item number. In step three, I will create the matrix header and line titles. In step four, I will create the matrix content. Let's start with the first step. Today, I will add matrix tables in the Business Central on-premise server with the Business Central 2022 wave one release. I've installed the 4 customizable report pack and I've executed the step-by-step -step wizard from the assisted setup to get started. Of course, everything I do today is also available on the Business Central SaaS environment. I also have the 4 Designer installed on my PC. The 4 Designer can be downloaded from the 4 website. The first thing we need to do when we want to display a matrix table is to group the individual lines together. We need a single dynamic line per item. We'll use a group footer for this. So let's go to Business Central. Let's see what we're going to work with. I've prepared a sales order for this webinar. And this on this sales order, I've added a number of bicycles. But the difference uh, in this sales order is that I've created a variant for each bicycle. So I've got the uh, large blue, large red, medium blue, small blue, etc. So what I would like to do is create one line per item number. I've got two items on this uh, on this invoice and then create a matrix table for my sizes and colors. So over to Fornav. I've prepared this webinar beforehand. I've prepared a matrix table start report layout, which is just a copy of the, of the built-in layout. And the first thing we're going to do is add a, a group footer because we want to display uh, all of the item properties in uh, uh, in a group footer. So insert section group footer. And just adding a group footer is not enough. In order to make sure that the, the items are grouped properly and displayed properly, I need to add, I need to change the sorting of my data item. So I'll change the sorting of my data item, remove the document number and line number and start sorting by number. Then on my data item, I need to tell Fornav how to group my total fields, which is of course by number. Hit OK. Then I can add my line. I'm just going to copy the line from my lines body which should do. Then I need to tell Fornaf which fields to total and which not to, because by default Fornaf will start calculating the total for all of the decimal fields uh, that I use in the report. And I don't want the totals for unit price and I don't want the totals for line discount either, just for quantity and amount. So that is fine. Then I'm going to delete the normal lines body. And finally, I'm going to add a record because I want to display the item description. Uh, I need to get the description from the item table. So I'll add the item table, link it to the, to the line and the link reference is the item number is the field number in the sales line. And whilst I'm at it in the next step, I'm going to need the item variant table. So I'm going to add that one as well. I set the link reference to line and set the link to the code is the variant code and the item number 
is the number on the sales line. So that just gets some data from the related uh, from these related tables, and then for the description, I can grab the description of the item. As you remember, the description on the on the sales line was the description of the variant, uh, which is not what I want to display in my group footers. So all of that is done. Let's preview my report. And I'll preview with the sales order that we looked at earlier. You will notice right now that I've got two lines, one for my bicycle and one for my touring bicycle. And my uh, unit prices are correct and the quantities and the amounts are totaled. So that's the first step. Now, the next step, we are going to add the, uh, the matrix table underneath the, uh, the item line. So the second thing we need to do is to create a matrix table headers. And to do this, we'll need to write some JavaScript to determine the matrix header and row titles. This, of course, sounds a lot scarier than it really is. And JavaScript is pretty accessible. Um, first thing we need to do is to add to, the, to define our variables. And defining these variables, we will do in the line on pre-data item. And I'll type really fast because, of course, I've prepared all of this beforehand, so I just need to copy and paste. I've got a last item variable. I've got a header titles, which is an array, and a line titles, which is also an array. And then, of course, I need to load some data into these arrays. And that I will do in the line on after get record. So every time a record is read from the database, I will run this JavaScript. And this JavaScript uh, says... First step is if last item is not item number, so if I'm reading a new item from the database, um, then my header titles, line titles are going to be cleared. Uh, otherwise, I will be uh, continuing with the uh, header titles and line titles from for the previous item. Don't want that. And I will set last item to item number. Then I will take the item variant description, uh, which is why I read the item variant table from the, from the database, and I will split it. Uh, you may recall that the item variant description had uh, uh, two components. One of, it, one of them was the color and the other one was the size, and they were split by a comma. So if I do an item variant description dot split, I will split this into an array. Uh, one of them will be the color and the other one will be the size. And then I will set the header titles if not header titles dot include variant info, uh, which is the uh, uh, the size. I will push that variant info into my header titles, and I'll do the same for the line titles. If not line titles includes variant info one, which is the color, I will push the line titles in uh, the, the variant info into the line titles. Which means that uh, if it exists, if I've already got this color or size, then it doesn't get added again. Finally, I call the add matrix data function. Uh, this add matrix data is a function, and of course, I need to call it. Usually, we, we would write these functions in the report on pre data item because that makes it easier to, uh, to use that, that JavaScript and other reports. But for the benefits of this webinar, I'll just do it like this. So add matrix data, and that gets me the data inside my matrix table, which means I can use it. So let's add a table and insert a column to the right and insert another column to the right. And I will insert some rows. And you can add as many columns and rows as you want. Uh, you can resize them uh, as, you, uh, as you need. And then, of course, on the first row of my, uh, of my table, I'm going to need to add my headers. And to add these headers, I can simply read the information from my header titles array. So if I open my source expression for my column header, I will say if header titles.length is greater than zero, um, 
So if there is a header title that one, I will use header titles zero. If not, I will use an empty uh, an empty string. I can use this for the other columns as well. But of course, for each column, I need to increment my length. So if there is a second, uh, if there is a second header title, then I use header titles one. I use the same for the third one. And I will use the same for the fourth one. And of course, arrays in JavaScript are zero based. So the first entry in an arrow in an array is number zero instead of zero, zero, number th number one, which is why the, th the fourth title is header titles three. So I've got those. And of course, I need to do the same thing for my row titles. And for the row titles, I will use the line titles, line titles length greater than zero. Then I use line titles uh, number zero, entry zero, else an empty string. I will use the same for the other two lines. And of course, use one. And for this one, I will use two. So that's it, nearly done. The only thing we need to do right now is to hide the uh, uh, to hide the the rows when there is no uh, no data for that particular row. And to do that, I can check if there is data for this row. And if not, I will hide it by using the show output and to hide it I will use the line titles dot length again so if line titles dot length is greater than zero then I know I've got a first row and I use the same for the second row only it will be greater than one and I will use the same for the third row only it will be greater than two Then we set can shrink on our group footer, so it shrinks uh, if we don't need as much space. So if we don't need any of these rows, then I don't use that space on my report. And let's preview. With our report. And you will notice that for the first bicycle I've got large medium small and extra large everything is sorted by alphabet and I've got blue red and pink colors and on the touring bicycle I've got 17 19 and 21 inch and I've only got two colors and you will notice that the row that we don't need has been hidden so that's a great start next step is to add the uh, is to add the actual data in our matrix tables. So we want to end, we want to add the individual cell va cell values, and to do this we will create an in-memory array of objects that will hold the quantity per color and size. Now to do this I will do something that I not not, not usually do in a four and a half webinar. Um, I will use a finished product, and I will use a finished report because it will take too long to add all of these individual cells so i will open a custom layout from the server and i'll grab my order matrix table final layout and of course i will explain to you exactly what i've done to get everything working properly so the first step to get the data in our matrix table the content in our matrix table is to set a new variable in the on data item and I've got a new array, which I call quantities, which will hold the quantities per color size combination. And then in my uh, line on after get record, I have added some extra code, uh, which is right here. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is add a search index constant, uh, which is a variable that you can't change. And to get my search index, uh, I need to check if 
the size color combination already exists because if the size color combination already exists I need to add my line quantity and otherwise I need to create the uh, line uh, size color combination in my array so if quantities dot find index then we'll find quantity size is variant info 0 and quantity color is variant info 1 then we can use the search index if search index is minus 1 means uh, it hasn't been found so I create a new object in my quantities array with size is variant info 0 color is variant info 1 and quantity is line dot quantity and if it does exist I'm going to get my quantities dot search index dot quantity and I'm going to add the line dot quantity to that so that adds the size color combination with the quantities to the quantities array which means that I can use the quantities array in my source expressions and what I'm going to do is if header titles dot length is greater than zero because otherwise there's no point in getting this array at all I'm going to do a quantities dot find which finds the, the, the correct quantity by quantity dot size is header titles zero and quantity dot color is line titles zero so if I've got that it's going to be this value and if it isn't there it's just going to be an empty string and you can make this a zero or anything else if you uh, if you want of course we do the same for the second line where header titles greater than zero, greater than one we'll find the header title the quantity size is header titles one and quantity color is still the first row so still line titles zero and you can imagine that we've built up the entire uh, the entire table like this so how does that look when we preview I've sneaked in a little bit of formatting changes as well I've add some added some lines and stuff to make everything a bit more readable uh, but what we've got is color size large medium small extra large blue pink red and you will see the quantities per color size combination and we do the same thing in the uh, for the touring bicycle where of course we don't have as many combinations but they're still displayed and like I said an empty uh, an empty value is an empty string so it doesn't display anything if you want to put, if you want to display a zero here then just add a zero instead of an empty string So let's recap what we just did. The first thing we did was to add a group footer so we could summarize the information per item. Once we had a group footer we were able to add the table for our matrix. We got the titles from the line data and we used the show output to hide the lines we did not need. Finally we added a quantities per size color combination to an array of objects. We got the correct information from that array by searching the array for, for the size color combination we needed. And of course, adding all of these separate table lines is pretty cumbersome. It works for the four lines we used here, and because that's not too many, you can still uh, you can still work with that. Uh, but what if you need more? And we will address that in a future webinar. We've got ways to build these uh, these tables dynamically. In this layout, uh, this layout I created plus the JavaScript I have used are all available on our GitHub uh, training repository. We don't have any questions at this moment in time, so I'll wrap up this coffee break. If you want to know more about 4NAV or if you want to download the 4NAV designer and converter, please visit our website. If you want to install 4NAV in Business Central Cloud, please visit the Microsoft App Source. And you can watch more videos about 4NAV on our YouTube channel. If you have any questions about 4NAV, please email them to support at 4NAV.com. For a full list of upcoming and recorded coffee breaks, please visit 4nav.com slash coffee break. Thank you very, very much for listening and goodbye.